My greetings to everyone. I am Professor Dr. Namita Rajput, Professor in Department of Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College, University of Delhi. In the ongoing series of Principles of Marketing, today we will be talking on types of channels of distribution followed by its functions and other paradigms relating to channel of distribution. The channels of distribution, also known as the marketing channels, it refers to the pathways through which the goods and services move from producer to the consumer. Now, there are several types of distribution channels, each with its own characteristics and the functions. So, we will be including the main types of channels of distribution, which may include the direct distribution channels. So, amongst the direct distribution channels, the first we are going to talk about is a direct sales. In the direct sales channel, the products are sold directly from the producer to the consumer without the involvement of intermediaries. So, this can include the sales through the company-owned stores, e-commerce platforms or the direct sales forces. Now, now the indirect channel distributions, we talk about retailers and the wholesalers. The retailers purchase the products from the wholesalers or the manufacturers and sell them to the consumers. They can range from small independent shops to the large chain stores. Followed by the wholesalers, the wholesalers purchase the goods in the bulk from the manufacturer and sell them to the retailers, the other business or the institutional buyers. Next, we have the distributors. Now, distributors act as intermediaries between the producer and the retailer or the end consumer, often specializing in the specific product categories or industries. And the next is your Agents. The agent represents the producer and facilitate the transactions between the producer and the buyer, earning a commission on the sales. Then we have a dual distribution. Now, sometimes the companies, they utilize the multiple distribution channels simultaneously, a practice known as dual distribution. For example, a company may sell its products both through its own retail stores and through the independent retailers also. We also have a concept of reverse distribution which involves the process of moving the goods from the consumer back to the producer. This can include the returns, the recycling or the disposal of the products at the end of their life cycle. Now we talk about a multi-channel distribution which involves using the multiple channels to reach the consumers. This can include a combination of a direct sale, the retail sales, the e-commerce and other distribution methods to reach a broad consumer base and cater to diverse preferences. The choice of distribution channel or the combination of the channels depends on the various factors such as the nature of the product, the target market characteristics, the competitive landscape and the company resources. So, effective channel design and the management are very critical for achieving the market penetration, managing the cost and delivering the superior customer value. Now, the types of channel distribution, the direct channel distribution with the corresponding example like door-to-door -door sales, a company that manufactures the high quality kitchen knives may utilize a door to door sales approach by deploying some sales representative to visit the homes and demonstrate the knife and the knives to the potential customers. The representatives can actually showcase the product features answering to the different queries and the questions what the customers have and take the orders directly from the interested customers. Now, in case of a chain store sales, a beverage company may engage in the direct sales to chain stores supplying its products directly to major supermarket chains or the retail outlets. So, by bypassing the intermediaries, the companies can negotiate the terms and the agreements directly with the chain stores, ensuring a prominent placement of its products on the shelves. 
The next is your courier or the post office sales. A specially clothing retailer may offer a direct sales to the consumers through a catalog or an online platform, allowing the customers to place the orders from the clothing items. The retailers then ships the products directly to the consumer homes or provides the option for in-store pickup at the local post offices or the courier service locations. Then we have in a very interesting part called telemarketing. A telecommunication company, they might employ a telemarketing as a direct distribution channel to promote a new mobile number, a mobile phone plans to the potential customers. So these telemarketers could make an outbound calls to the individuals presenting the benefits of the plans and assisting them in signing up for the services over the phone. Now we have e-commerce and online sales and electronic manufacturing might sell its products directly to the consumers through its own e-commerce websites. The customers can visit the website, browse the product catalog, make the purchases and have the items shipped directly to their doorsteps, providing a convenient and direct purchasing experience. Now we talk about the company-owned retail stores. An athletic footwear company may establish the company-owned retail stores in key urban areas to directly sell its sneakers and the sportswear to the consumers. So by controlling the retail environment, the company can deliver a consistent brand experience and directly engage with the customers. Next we have is a manufacturer's representatives. Now in the industrial equipment sector, a manufacturer of heavy machinery may employ its own sales representatives to engage with the construction companies and directly sell the specialized machinery for their projects. The type of channel of distribution, what we have discussed, these representatives provide the technical expertise and build a relationship with the customers to facilitate the sales. Each of these examples, what we have discussed right now, they illustrate how the business can actually employ the direct channel of distribution to reach the customers, control the sales and deliver the products or the services directly to end consumers while tailoring the customer experience to their specific needs and preferences. Now we talk about the indirect channel of distribution. The indirect channel of distribution it refers to the methods by which a company's products or the services, they reach their final destination. Now, in an indirect distribution channel, intermediaries such as wholesalers, distributors, retailers are involved in the process of getting the product from the manufacturer to the end consumers. Now, there are several types of indirect distribution channels each with its own unique characteristics and the advantages. The wholesalers to retailers to customers. Now in this type of a channel, the manufacturer sells its products to the wholesalers who then sell the products to the retailers and eventually the retailers sell the products to the consumers. Now, this is a traditional channel often used for consumer goods such as electronics, clothing and household items. Now we talk about the wholesalers to business to business that is B2B to consumers. In this channel, manufacturer sells the products to the wholesalers who in turn sells to other business rather than directly to the consumers. Now these business then incorporate the product into their own offerings or sell them to the consumers. This type of channel is common in industries like construction, 
manufacturing and industrial equipment. Agent or broker. In this channel, an agent or broker is used as an intermediary to facilitate a sale of a product between the manufacturer and end consumer. The agent or a broker does not take any kind of an ownership of the products but earns a commission for facilitating the transaction. This type of channel is common in industries such as real estate, insurance and certain types of commodities trading. Now we have another called franchisee. A franchisee is a type of indirect distribution channel in which an individual or a group is granted the right to sell the products or the services of a larger company that is the franchisor under the franchisor's brand and the business model. Now, this model is commonly used in industries such as fast food, hospitality and retail. Nowadays, we talk about digital. Yes, we talk about online marketplaces. Now, in the rise of e-commerce, online marketplaces, manufacturers can sell their products on these platforms, reaching a large number of consumers without the need for a physical retail presence. Now, there are just few examples of indirect distribution channels, but in reality, there are many variations and combinations of these types as the companies often use a mix of channel to reach their target market. Now the choice of distribution channels depends on various factors including the nature of the product, the target market and the company's overall business strategy. The channel of distribution play a very critical and a crucial role in getting the products from the manufacturers to the consumers. Now we talk about the functions of channels of distribution. The first and the foremost is facilitating exchange. The channel of distribution, they facilitate the exchange of goods and services between the producer and the consumer. They provide a bridge between a point of production and the point of consumption. The physical distribution. The channel of distribution, they help in the physical movement of the goods from the manufacturer to the end consumer. Now, this includes the transportation, warehousing and inventory management. Now, we talk about financing. The channel of distribution often provides financing options for both the producer and the consumer. For instance, the wholesalers and the retailers, they offer the credit terms to their customers while manufacturers may receive the credit from the distributors. Next is your risk taking. The channel of distribution assume some of its risk associated with the marketing of the products. For example, wholesalers and retailers, they take on the risk of holding the inventory that may or may not sell. The market information. The channels of distribution, they provide valuable market information to the producer about consumer preferences, the market trends and the competitor activities. This information can be crucial for product development and the marketing strategies. Next is your promotion. The channel of distribution can play a very important role in promoting the products to the consumers. For example, the retailers often engage in point of sale advertising and other promotional activities to actually drive the sales. Next we have and after sales services. The channel of distribution can provide after sales services such as customer support, product warranties, repairs, etc., which can actually enhance the customer satisfaction and the loyalty. 
Next important function of the channel of distribution is breaking bulk. The channel of distribution allow for breaking of bulk quantities of the products produced by the manufacturer into smaller, more manageable quantities for the consumers. The next is your matching. The channels of distribution match the supply of goods from the producer with the demand from the consumers, ensuring that the products are available when and where they are needed, providing efficiency. The channels of distribution, they help to increase the efficiency of the overall distribution process by reducing the number of transactions, transportation cost and inventory levels. Now by performing these functions as we have discussed, the channel of distribution they play a very vital role in ensuring that the goods and services they reach the consumers efficiently and effectively. Now we talk about the major distribution strategies. The major distribution strategies with generic examples and elaborated information. So let's start. The first we are going to talk upon is intensive distribution. Intensive distribution, it involves placing a product in a many outlet as possible to maximize its availability and accessibility to the consumers. This strategy is commonly used for the products with high consumer demand and low consumer involvement such as snacks, food, soft drinks and the basic household items. So the marketer tries that its availability is extensive and accessible to the maximum number of places. So that's how we call it as intensive distribution. Now in this particular strategy, the companies employing this strategy, they aim to make their products widely available to capture a large market share and generate a high sales volume. Now let's take an example. A generic snack food company may use an intensive distribution strategy by making its product available in grocery stores, in convenience stores, gas stations, vending machines and online marketplaces. So by ensuring a widespread availability, the company can meet the consumer demand and maximize the sales opportunities. Next we have is a selective distribution. Now in the selective distribution, it involves using a limited number of outlets in the geographical area to sell the products. Now this particular strategy is very typically involved and employed for the products that require a certain level of consumer service or an expertise like electronics, high-end cosmetics and furniture. The companies opt for selective distribution to the main control over their brand image and the customer experience while reaching out specific target market. So there was important strategies what we have discussed right now. The first we discussed is intensive distribution in which the network is there, availability is there, accessibility is there in the maximum number of outlets. On the contrary, in the major part of the selective distribution, the customer actually has to go to those particular selective stores to identify and satisfy their needs especially in terms of high-end cosmetics, furniture, electronics, because not number of stores are there. So the selective distribution involves a very limited number of outlets in the geographical areas where the manufacturer is selling their products. Now let us take an example of this particular strategy that is the selective stores. 
a generic electronic manufacturer may utilize a selective distribution strategy selling its product through an authorized retailers specialty electronic stores departmental stores so he has to carefully choose the retail partner and the company can ensure that its products receive the appropriate level of promotion and the customer support enhancing the overall brand perception now we come on to another major distribution strategy called exclusive distribution now in case of exclusive distribution it involves granting exclusive rights to a limited number of retailers or the distributors to sell a product in the specific geographical area now this strategy is commonly used for luxury and high end products as well as specialized industrial equipment the companies opt for exclusive distribution to maintain a premium brand image control the pricing and provide a high level of the customer service let's take an example of a luxury watch now a generic luxury watch brand may employ an exclusive distribution strategy allowing only the distribution dealers to select the locations to sell its watches by limiting the availability of its products the company can create an aura of exclusivity and ensure that the customer receive a personalized attention and expertise when making a purchase now the direct distribution is the next distribution strategy now in this it involves making the product available directly to the consumer and without the use of intermediary this strategy can involve an online store online sales company owned retail stores direct sales representative etc the company use direct distribution to establish a closer relationship with the customers control the entire customer experience and capture a larger portion of the profit margin thank you so much